Hey guys, hope you're doing great. Jason here with an in-depth minimalist shoe review. Today we're looking at the Merrill Vapor Glove 4. To be specific, this is the men's type, black color. And then I chose the 11.5 USA size, the 11 UK, 46 European, or just generally the 29.5 centimeter. Before we get started, here is my foot specifications to hopefully help you judge if this shoe may be a good choice for you. As you can see here, I drew an outline around my feet and marked each foot's length, then the widest widths across the balls of my feet, as well as across my toes. The length of my left foot is 27.8 centimeters, which is slightly larger than my length of my right, which is 27.5 centimeters. The widths across the balls of my feet are also slightly different, my left being 12.1 centimeters and my right being 12.4 centimeters. And the width across my toes are very similar, left being 12.6 centimeters and the right being 12.5. So let's dive into some details with the shoe. As you can see right away, there's that Vibram outsole. Not much beats that Vibram outsole. You can roll it right up into a ball if you'd like. Squish down this way, down the middle. Twist it, it works. On the outside of the right part of the right shoe, there's Merrill. Barefoot 2 on the left side. There's these parts on the outside here, which I remember hearing with the previous model that this is where the most wear and tear was on each side by the metatarsal heads. So they tried to improve that and put these strips here. On the tongue, Merrill Vapor Glove 4. On the inside of the right shoe, there's some details on this sticker here. Nothing on the underside of the tongue. Pretty fabric on the inside. No major issues or rubbing on the inside there. Long tongue going down. But because of that, you can totally move it out of the way if you wanted to ever install your own earthing kit on the Earth Runners website. One, two, three, four pairs of this system that it goes through there. Two eyelets at the top if you want to make it laces a bit shorter. The laces itself have a slight stretch to it, you can kind of see there. Mine's starting to wear out a little bit there. I've had this shoe for about just under a year now. Some light wear there. Some light wear on the tongue there, that's also stretchy. Yeah. So, I have a pretty wide foot. As you can see here, my foot practically goes over the shoe. On the Merrill website, they do list the shoe as having a medium width. On Amazon, however, where I ordered the shoe, it doesn't currently tell you the width. So personally, the shoe does unfortunately curve over a little too early for me, really cutting into my pinky toe. This may be the same for you depending on your foot's width. That being said, if I'm being honest, it doesn't actually bother me too much in this shoe. It may be due to the extra length, I'm not quite sure. It's obviously not exactly good for my foot, but it doesn't cause any pain rendering the shoe unwearable. Regarding the extra length in the toes, I'm still glad it's there as I don't mind my shoe slightly long and would rather the slight extra width. But as you can see here, there's a slight blemish of where the tip of my great toe ends just before it would go under the rubber end. Obviously, it's not a huge con, just thought I'd mention it. Now, before you start commenting about how my shoe laces look different, no, they didn't come that way, and yes, I do tie my laces differently to help and try and accommodate for my wide forefoot. If you're curious about trying the same thing, I have pictures of various ways to tie laces as per foot type, from wide or narrow feet to flat or high arches in my first video, Purpose for Minimalist Shoe Reviews. Here are some details and features as per the Merrill website. Most important, I would say, being breathable mesh lining, stack height of heel toe 6.5 to 6.5 millimeters, and a six ounce weight per half pair. So because this was my first barefoot shoe, when I went on my first outdoor walk wearing it, my feet got warm. I did not think that the breathable mesh worked as advertised. 
What I later realized was because this was my first barefoot shoe, my foot muscles were working overtime, actually working to help me walk, and that was warming up my foot. After I got used to that, that breathable mesh actually does work quite well. On Amazon.ca, the product features for the Vapor Glove 4 also include being barefoot, vegan friendly, and that Vibram high performance rubber sole. There are only two other minor cons I can think of. One being, of course, the text will wear off on the bottom of your shoe from your foot, but that happens on most shoes. The other being, due to the long tongue of the shoe, after a workout, running, or probably just moving in general, it will shift to one side. It might just be my foot, and it doesn't bug me in any way, there's no pain from it happening, but if this does personally bug you, this shoe will most likely have its tongue shift to one side, so you may want to steer clear of it. I personally have been using the Vapor Glove 4 as a gym shoe. Because it is a little narrow for my foot, using it as a running shoe tends to irritate my feet slightly if my foot moves a lot around in it, such as when I'm running. When I purchased this shoe just under a year ago, I paid 125 Canadian dollars on Amazon.ca. It's currently now 140 Canadian dollars as of May in 2020. So, overall, if you have a wide foot like mine, you might want to size up about half a size just to add a bit more um, width in the pinky toe right here. If you have a foot wider than mine, you may want to steer clear of this shoe. Other than that, I pretty much recommend this shoe for almost anyone looking for a minimalist shoe. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you found this video helpful regarding the Merrill Vapor Glove 4. See you next time.